this is Lee with A2 Gaming 12. And uh, we're back with another video over Prelude to Vicksburg, Battle of Chickasha Bayou, December the 26th through the 29th, 1862, Revolution Games. This is uh, volume nine in the series. And we've got our credits here. Stephen Oliver, Designed and Research. Stephen Oliver, Map. Stephen Oliver and Charlie Kieber, Game Counters. Box Art, M Mark Mahaffey. Game Development, Melvin Deal. And Rules and Charts Layout, Richard Handwith. And Blind Source System Designer, Herman Lippmann. This is this is probably my my favorite Civil War brigade system, and probably my my favorite Civil War game system. Period. I uh, did not play a lot of Civil War games uh, when I was uh, younger and going through my career, I guess because I really didn't have find one that I liked. And uh, uh, Outlaw Hill had uh, Gettysburg, and I had the, I don't know, it was a special anniversary edition. I don't even know, remember what year that was, but uh, but of course, I don't know. I just it wasn't wasn't something that really intrigued me. I've I've always enjoyed reading about Civil War history and studying it, especially with uh, Stonewall Jackson. And um, so, I guess a lot of my my uh, peak interest was in Civil War games that that uh, dealt with one of his battles. And I got started with uh, the Gamers Civil War Brigade series pretty late. By the time I started playing those. It was almost, I don't know, in a few, that wasn't long, and they were changing over to uh, the line of battle. And so uh, I was able to pick up a lot of the uh, of that series uh, used online. But uh, this has got to be my favorite. It's the ease of play. Yet, you know, it, it's there's a there's a lot of chrome here, <laughs> and not only that, it really makes you think and plan and and you know try to work things out. But you know, your plans don't go as as uh, you expect because of the 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 command roles that you have to take. So you, you're not for sure whether or not, you know, when you do a command, whether it's it's going to, you know, be followed or if you're going to be able to do anything with those units. And then on the other side, you've got the key chips where your opponent could play a command confusion, you know, and now your your commander does something totally different. You know, he's got some other order he he uh, that's decides to use or he's forced to use based on the... the uh, the chit there that's played, or you got the fog of war, the fortress of war. So what I wanted to mention uh, before we get started here was I was thinking, uh, I, I don't know if I was watching one of my videos or someone else's, but uh, I, I was thinking about this, this instance here where you got these large, Brigades, okay, one counter, 
All right. And then you've got the smaller ones here. You know, you can, you only fit 10 strength points in a hex. So here we've got two units that are able to, to stack, stack, but normally they wouldn't because this guy's got a nine on this other, underneath side, but here we can. So we've got a strength of nine and I can use this unit here on the top who has a cohesion of four. Okay. Now, because I've got two separate units here, um, if this, if the, if the attacker is repelled or forced to retreat, it's only going to be the top unit. It's only going to be the lead unit. And so my attack can can continue to go through, you know. So they can knock off part, but yet, you know, this other unit here is still able to attack. While if it was just, say, this guy's not here, but this guy what it was, this whole unit is forced to retreat if I get that result. Whereas, bring these guys back in. If I have two separate counters, you know, um, there's a there's a there's a big advantage of having two separate counters, smaller units that are stacked together, than it is to have one that is a, is a large unit. Okay, with with uh, ten or more, you know, or nine or eight or whatever it may be. Here, I've still got strength of nine, and I've got this strong CR, and so I've got a better chance of, you know, possibly defeating this unit or getting it to, you know, force to retreat or whatever when I have s separate units because like I said if one is forced you know say I get a retreat result offensive treat uh offensive uh, retreat then only this top unit has to retreat the bottom unit can still attack while otherwise if this was the the only unit I had there he's forced to retreat I can't continue to attack so I don't know if that was looked at. You know, I can understand when you have, say, uh, okay, let's move over here. Say over here, <laughs> where we've got, say, with this unit here, say this unit's the one being attacked. And let's say I'm attacking with this unit. And then this is a, well, I don't have to, I don't have to say which unit's the attacker. I just say both those are attacking this. I don't have to say which one's the lead. So if here, if he's able to force, say, you know, this unit away, on a, then he's only facing this unit, but still I've got an attack going through. So that's understandable. But when you've got a, like a, a funnel created because of the terrain, you know, because of that, that, ability to stack if you have, you know, say even two reduced units, depleted units, you know, if this unit was depleted, that's a six, that's still too high, but this unit and this unit could stack, then you've got an advantage, I think, as the as the attacker with the two units. Um, that may be something to look at. Um, I know in this, in this battle, you have a lot of those situations, whether it be here or over here. But, I, you know, it, it's only after the units are depleted that then I could stack them. But in my opinion, they shouldn't be stronger. They should be weaker because, you know, even though they're from the same division, they're from different brigades. You know, I know they still they provide, uh, you know, Well, I guess they're not from different brigades, are they? No, they're not. Boy, there'd be different regiments in maybe. Right? Different regiments.
So, so I guess you could say, well, you know, they're they're from the same brigade, uh, but to me, I would think they would be a little weaker. Actually, it makes them, in my opinion, it makes them a little stronger. Taking depleted units and stacking them together, the ones from the same brigade. For example, Thayer back here, we could stack. Uh, these two units together, and they'd have a strength of 10. Now, they're, of course, their CR is only a 1, but, you know, some of these others, like, okay, these two Blair units over here, stack them together, okay, that's 8, and they'd have a, you know, a CR of 3, and now if one of them gets gets uh, forced to retreat during an attack, you still have the other one there to attack. To attack. Now, maybe he's, he, you know, you could support him with uh, this one here, 31st Missouri, and uh, you still get the CR of three. So, or even, you know, you've got this unit, but he's, he's of course, he's, you can't stack anybody with him. I'm just talking about the ones you can stack. So the depletion, uh, uh, you get units that are depleted, you stack them together, and it looks like they're stronger. Um, they have, when I say they're stronger, they, they just have a, an advantage of, well, in the attack, if one, if the top unit, the lead unit, okay, which is, you know, the, you got to choose one. If that unit is forced to retreat, you still have the one underneath. So, uh, I don't, th maybe that's something that, that wasn't looked at during, uh, you know, or hasn't been addressed. You know, if I stack these two, these are actually probably, in my opinion, um, you know, uh, attack or defense, even in defense. Okay, in defense, if you get, say, a retreat result, let's see here. Well, I guess most, most of them are going to re be retreat all. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. So that doesn't apply, but uh, the attacker, if they have to retreat, which is not very, well, when it is on the fire table. So... Say on the offensive fire situation, if you have two units, only the t the one unit is going to be forced to retreat. So you're still going to have, you know, a unit there. So you know they can't fire at them, get them to retreat, and then move in, because that unit is still there because of the stacking. So stacking two depleted units or in some cases, two smaller units like <clears throat> I have down here. I've got... Like I've got here with the Withers. You know, both of these, well, you know, he's normally a three, and this guy's normally a five. They could, they, they could stack when they're full, but here they are, uh, both of them depleted. Um, but I can even stack these two over here. So, you know, here I'm spending a lot of time talking about this, but I think it's kind of important to think about, you know, why why are why is it stacking two units, uh, two, they're, they're the, of the same brigade, but they're you know different different regiments, you know, so. Um, that's just th something to think about. And, you know, t you can use that as an advantage, I guess, in, in this, because the rules are, you know, uh, maybe that was intended. Um, but in my opinion, it makes like t two units that are depleted. Um, well, 
it's it's uh when you're attacking rarely you're going you don't you're just not going to have one, only one unit's going to have to be forced to retreat if you get a negative result okay but if you have only one unit okay even if it's a larger unit and it's forced to retreat you don't have another you don't have a, a unit still to attack okay unless you're attacking from another hex so all right enough of that uh, maybe I'll do a whole video just on that. Um, but you see that here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be advantageous to the hex that has the two units instead of the opponent hex that only has one unit. Okay. They could be of the same strength. And even the other one could have a higher CR, but they're going to, you know, if they're forced to retreat, the hex empty. Okay, all of that unit is retreating. So, all right, so um, we're ready to do the artillery phase with the 430 turn. We've got uh, three turns left, counting this turn. And uh, the Confederates have to push these guys back across the levee and uh, here. Okay, and here. They've got to get rid of Sheldon's uh, two, I guess that those would be brigades. This one and, you know, and the Union is trying to hold on. They're trying to get more units across and hold on to their... Um, Their their uh, success in getting across the the levee into the under the trench. Okay, this is a marginal victory. So more likely they're not going to get over here back here, possibly unless they do it over here on this left flank of the Confederates' left flank, Union right flank. So uh, I don't think they're going to get back here. So. <clears throat> All right, let's start with the artillery phase. We've got um, Foster here. And his only target, well, he could fire here at Bowman. I think you can't see Bowman yet. There he is. Okay. Or he could fire at Thomas here, which uh, I think that's what he wants to do. He wants to fire at Thomas. Um, two, three... Um, Thomas has the levee and the trench and he is, he is at a higher level. So, and let's see here. I guess, yeah, the trench is, I mean, the levee's right on his hex along his hex side. So. We're giving we're giving the benefit of the doubt. So that's gonna be a shift of three. Thomas uh does not have support from his brigade, so he's gonna have a CR of two, but trench increases that back to a four. So we've got six, two, three, and yeah, if he rolls in the fifties, he could he could force a roll for a hit. And we roll a 52. No, he needed a 50. No, oh, three. Uh, yeah, he needed a 54 or higher. So he missed it by two. So Foster has fired. Probably should have moved him up. All right, now. Right here, we've got Bowman. The only, the only, the problem here with, uh, with Bowman is he wants to fire on the 20, 120th Ohio. He wants to fire right here. But because Withers is here and he's actually firing over, over the top of them, um, and he'd be using canister. Um, 
So he's going to have to not fire at him, but fire at this one. Because it's not canister. Range is three. One, two, three. So under the rules, you're not allowed to fire. You can fire over your own units. But if the unit that you're firing over is adjacent to uh, your target, and the target is in canister range, you can't. And that's in 9.1B, overhead fire. So, All right, so Bowman and Weems, we've got a minus two because of low ammo. So we've got a total of, that's effective range, so we've got a total of four. So it's going to be two. Strength of two. We roll a 54. Sheldon has a two. He's, oh, he's in the trench. So we're going to be over in C. Dang. Uh, he's got a two. We got a fit. What does say? A fifty-four. Oh, we do get the two. See, there's the C. Okay, I was at a four. I had to go to the left two for the low ammo, and then because he's in the trench, I have to go two more, right there. And I rolled a fifty-four. Go across here, zero to two. Well, guess what? He has a two. So, we can do the routine. Roll a 55. That's going to be a depletion. And a retreat two. So, he's depleted. And now he's going to retreat two. But before he does that, Thomas here gets to fire opportunity fire because he's leaving his his hex to go to so um thomas has a four opportunity fire is going to be at half so he has a two he he's in the trench so that means we go, we go down to c here again we have to have a 54 or higher and i missed so, Sheldon moves to here, and because he's retreating, he's he retreats into the bayou. So he's got a roll against his cohesion, which is a one, and he doesn't pass. So he gets a a shaken marker, and then he moves one more space here on his retreat. So. Bowman here was successful. All right, now we go to uh, Lanfear and Hoffman. We've got a strength of 12, and we're firing here at Thomas. Okay, Thomas is going to have a CR of 4 due to the trench. He's not supported. I mentioned this earlier. Okay, so we start at 10, 12, and we're going to have to go uh, two to the left for the trench, eight, nine, and then one for the levee. So we're at six, seven. 32, I don't think we're going to be able to, nope. 32 is too low to do anything. So no effect there. I haven't mean, had much success firing at the at units um, like that. Okay, so we've got Ward back here. Uh, he can't fire over here because this. Let's see, is that the same? No, he can. He can fire at Thomas. No, Thomas is on his side. He don't want to fire at Thomas. Um, I 
think I'm on a movie. Movie him over here with Greg. He's got to have some support somehow. Okay, yeah, we're going to move him. So Ward is going to move. Yeah, so he's going to go one, two, three, four, five. He's going to go right there. And let's see here. Um, yeah, here we go. We've got this one here. Okay, these two guys and fire at Thomas here. Thomas is not uh, in the trench or get anything from the levee. So one, two, three, four, five. They're going to be within effective range. So that's going to be 10. Take a 10. Take a 10. Look at this. Another 66. Strength of 10, 66. Thomas has a CR of only a one. It's going to be severe. 53. Depleted. Moraliot. Retreat two. He's already depleted. So, he goes to the broken box track. The broken box three. So, blasted him. Okay, over here we've got Duncan, who is in uh, canister range against the 13th U.S. Battalion and 113th Illinois. So, All right, so we've got Duncan gets his strength increased by half, so he's at a three. He also gets the canister bonus because he's smooth bore shift to the right. So now his strength's at four. He rolled a 63. Strength of four, okay. It's gonna be routine. 55, depletion and retreat to the lead unit. So here's just a prime example. Okay, so the only unit that's retreating is this one. He's depleted and then he has to retreat two. So, I think he would go there. Not there, but like that would be fine. Well, it's only one, so he could actually go here and then here to this guy. So, and let's see here. Yeah, he didn't take him around yet. So, that was, uh, but Smith is still here. See, I don't have to move him up or anything. He's still there. Um, of course, he's in the way of this unit now. You could argue that. Um, but if we were, say, in uh, close combat, you know, I, I'd attacked and we got a defensive fire, I can still attack with this unit. And that's a great advantage against the artillery piece that you can still attack, especially when it's alone. So... All right, now we have, um, oh, right here we got Garrett and Blunt. Okay, um, they can fire over. Um, they 
the fire say it Duncan? One, two, three. It's going to be effective range. That's 12. He's got the levee and the trench. So we go. It's going to be a strength of six. Um. Let me look here about the uh, trenches. I guess it's, I guess it's any. Yes, yeah, it says Confederate units. Doesn't say infantry unit, it just says units. I don't really know how the artillery could use the rifle pits unless they. I don't think they would be using the rifle pits. The rule says units. So, this, that means this artillery unit is going to be a six. I don't know if we can hit with a six on a, yeah, we can. So, fifty-four. Yep, there's your team. Thirty-six. We get a morale hit, retreat two. So, and he's forced to retreat to, to, okay, I just opened that up. Okay, and of course the Confederates don't have any more guns, so now we've got Hart here and Ward, strength of eight, and they could fire at Barton, 42nd Georgia there. It's hard to see in this, we'll see one, two, three, four, the rifle mixed, okay, so... That's effective. So that's eight. We have to have to adjust um, for the trench and the levee. So eight, nine, we go down to five and then four. And Martin has a CR of five because he's in the trench. 26 is not going to be enough. Okay. So, all right. So that is all of the... Uh, artillery let's draw a chip and get started Pemberton so Pemberton I think he'd like to really activate uh, Greg there. But uh, four, he doesn't get activated. That's a limited activation. So Pemberton is finished. Next is Sherman. How about that? He doesn't get activated, so he's finished. He can't activate anyone. Failed his roll. Stand to it. Okay, that's for the uh, the uh, Confederates. We'll put that up there. Next, we have A.J. Smith, which is Burbridge over here. No, 
limited activation. They can do an offensive fire here, though. So we've got this unit. And this unit has got a carbine. I think he has to be adjacent. No? He can do long range. So he'd be able to add his factors, which should half would be one. That'd be a total of eight right here. Um, we've got to subtract uh, or move to the left. So eight, we go to five and then to four. And he has a CR of three plus five. Uh, three plus two is five. Uh, 34 is not enough to do anything. Okay, yeah. And uh, that's the only, only ones that can fire. So, all right. So Smith, uh, AJ Smith is finished. Burbridge is done. We draw somebody else. We got M. Smith. Can he activate anyone? No. And uh, Vaughn, he's over there. The only ones he's got, Vaughn. Uh, the only units he have is over here on the broken track, so we're gonna use Vaughn as the as the uh, no activation. So Smith goes back in the cup, shake it around, mix them a little bit, pull somebody out. We got steel. So let's go for steel. I get a four limited activation. So with steel. I either got Honey or Thayer, or Hovey. Hovey or Thayer. Either one, I guess Thayer is the one we're going to not, not activate. So Thayer gets flipped over. Not having much luck on rolls. Fog of War. a six. Uh, a possible Confederate casualty. We rolled a 14. That's S.D. Lee. So, let's see here. Look at the exclusive rules. Okay, so S.D. Lee is taken out. He's wounded. And his replacement comes in. Put him over there. So, we've got that guy. That's who we draw, SD, SD Lee's replacement, who only has a three. Roll a one. Well, 
We want to activate withers. So we can possibly do something about uh, about 120th Ohio here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do offensive fire. So Sheldon's 120th Ohio is the target. I'm going to start over here with this unit. He's going to have a three. Sheldon's got a one CR. Alright, we rolled a 65. Let's say he's got a what a three. And we said he's got a one. No, he's probably got less than that. Okay, he's gonna have a zero. Because he's not supported. That's another minus one. So at zero, he's gonna be in severe. No, 22, he's depleted, and that's retreat to. So, okay. So he's depleted. Now he's got to retreat, but before he, as he's retreating, he's going to be opportunity fired on by this unit and this unit. So over here, that unit has, uh, he doesn't get to fire. This unit has two. Strength of two. Thirteen's not going to be enough. Thirteen, nope. Oh, you have it anyway, so it'd be a one. Okay, Thomas here is now firing, and that's a uh, strength of two because it's half. Nope, nope. Not going to do anything. All right, so he retreats. Let's see. Yeah, retreat two. All right, so he goes there, and then to retreat out of this X, Thomas gets to fire on him again. Twenty three, still not. I don't think it's enough. Three twenty, no. Okay, and then he goes into this, his second retreat right there, into that marsh, which is going to force him to be disrupted. Because he's got a less than, he had a zero CR, so automatic disruption there. Okay. So, now we can have our movement that way. We're doing an attack. So, I can actually have these guys. Well, this guy can. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, one, two, got this unit back here who's disrupted. These guys are going to move to there. He'll move to there. All right, so now we're going to have this attack. Put this guy on top. So, there and there. This guy's the defender. Okay, he's got a strength of only a four. And he's going to attack here. So, 
just move this to the side. Defensive fire here to here. And I really should switch the blocks, but Sheldon's the defender. Withers is the attacker. Sheldon's doing the defensive fire. So, and of course, Withers is going to have plus two. He's in the trance. He's firing over the levee. So, uh, let's see. He's going to have to see four. See, he goes uh, two, and then he's going to be at one. And uh, Withers, let's see, the 46 Mississippi B has a, a CR of six. 63. But it's not enough. He couldn't even do it anyways. It, 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 with a one strength, he's not able to hit. He's not even do anything to somebody's got a CR five or more. All right, so. Yeah, he's got a strength of four. CR of zero. So, okay, we've got, uh, what is this, eight. Strength of eight here. Okay. This other unit is a supporting unit. Eight, that makes this 11. It's almost three to one. It's just two to one, no. All right, so we got to start out with a strength of uh, eight, nine. Two to one, so we move up to 12, 13. We got a higher CR, we go 14, 16. So that's where we're going to be, 14, 16, 62. And it's going to be severe. 54. Depleted two morale hits. Retreat all two. Panic three if anybody's nearby, and there is. So, first off, he's going to the broken track, he's got a CR of zero. So he goes to broken box three. Okay. Um, this unit here uh, is going to automatically panic because he's got a zero. Don't even have to roll for him. So he's going to go, let's see, he's going to go one, two, three, back to there. And that's it. And no, these guys are not advancing. So, Withers is done. <laughs> okay, we got ML Smith. he can activate so he's got uh, Blair Stewart and Smith okay I think he wants to go with Smith over here don't have anybody to fire at because the levee blocks their line of sight so they're just going to move so hmm So what do they want to do? They want if they that's going to be well he's on that trail. Hmm. 
lane. It's only one. To get in there. So we could do a defense. I could remove this shaking marker. This guy could go here over this levee because it's just plus one. So let's do a, do a defense. So we're going to go here with him. He's going to go there. Um, and then we're going to remove. Let's see, well, I've got this unit here. He'll go there. This guy will remove his shaking marker. Stay where he's at. Okay. We don't want to attack or anything. We just pop in there. All right. Throw him back in there. Turn G. Smith over. We just want to put pressure on him in Morgan. Okay. He's got Sheldon Lindsay DeCourcy. All right, so oops. I guess I'll try to do I guess I'll try to get Lindsay up there. I'm going to activate Lindsay. Oh, well, I got to roll first. So, three. So, I activate Lindsay. A maneuver gives him a movement of six. So, this would be one. Look at this. I'm gonna look to see if I can I can move a stack. Doesn't say you can't. We'll go one, two, and then roll to get into there. One, I think one. I can enter spending four movement points. So there we go. We get all of those guys in right here. And that's their movement. So Lindsay is finished. And Morgan goes back in. Huzzah! I don't think I have anybody. Well, yeah, I do. I can do a huzzah right over here. Let's do this with uh, Burbridge. 
right there. So, Burbridge is going to do a huzzah against the 40th Georgia. Right there, we've hit, which we've got Levy and, and the Trench right there. Okay, with the huzzah, you can move one hex, I don't need to. But uh, you don't have to move if you're adjacent. So one hex move. Uh, select one friendly hex, and may move every USA infantry unit up to one hex in any direction. Okay, we did that. But you have to have to end up adjacent to a Confederate. Occupied hex. Okay, we did that. And you must conduct close combat. So the CR is increased by plus one and the column shift of two. So. All right. So this unit still gets to do defense of fire. So he's got a four. It's not going to do anything. All right. So here we go. Um, his CR, because he's not, he can't be, let's see, is he? No, Swamp. Let's see, Swamp. I was thinking he was in the bayou, but Swamp, I don't think that affects your, your uh, support. Let's see. No, it doesn't. Okay, so he's going to have a CR of four. Barton's only going to have a three. No, he's going to have a five because he's in the in, he's in that trench. So, all right. So we've got seven to four. So we start off at seven. It's going to be a three to two, so eight to nine. A defender has a higher CR, so we go back to six seven. Uh, defenders in the trench, so we go down to four. There's the levy, so that goes down to three. But we increase two because of the huzzah, so we go at five. 32 is not going to be enough, so that means we're going to be in a close fight. And it's uh, 63, uh, depletion, attack, or morale hit. So Barton gets a depletion, possibly. He has to roll, and he passes, so he doesn't. Uh, and the attacker gets a morale hit. So no success there. Levy and the trench really uh, make it tough. Um, let's see if we can use that stand to it. We'll just, uh, let's see, make sure. Okay. So basically, well, we could do a re-roll. But we don't want to. It might get a worse, like we might get depleted. So we don't want to use that right now. Odds are not in our favor. Um, so, well, the fog of war is still there. Um... What do I do with that leader? What happened to him? I put him back in a cup already? Oh, that was a Huzal with the leader. All right, next, confident. 
That's something that the Union will play uh, during combat or after a combat. Superior artillery. Hmm. I think what I want to do here is I can remove over here. Uh, right here, I can remove this um, low ammo. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Next, sharpshooters. Yeah, we want to use this over here. Let's see. Um, let's do it right here. I think. Okay. Sharpshooters. Allows one infantry unit in any one hex to immediately issue fire combat against any eligible enemy target. Unit gets a, a, a uh, three column shift benefit. But the maximum can be uh, strength is five. So. All right, so. We're firing here to here. It's going to be a strength of five. Twenty-five is not enough. Hey, well, let's see. Let's see. Uh, he's only CR of two. Nope. All right, we tried. Command confusion. Okay, when playing this game, hit it any at all, you know what that means. And we got Morgan. So Morgan over here. I'm trying to activate. And yes, he can activate. Uh he's got Sheldon. <clears throat> Tell you with the Corsi. He's going to try to do a rebuild. Okay, but here we go. Command Confusion. So they have to roll to see what they get. Three. Uh, under the defend order. So um, under defend, um, he can move two. So this guy can move here. He can remove his shaken. So. And that's about it. Morgan goes back in. Uh, of course, he's finished. Empowerment. Um, let's see here. So I cannot enter uh, engagement. And for artillery engagements, just two hexes. Be two hexes away. So right there. So they can't enter here. Um, however, over here, I can. So I can move this unit up. I don't want to do that. Uh, I'll just put it here and I'll decide to use it later. Maybe I'll use it. Don't have anywhere really I want to use it. Fortunes of War. 
Okay, so the next chit M. Smith. So M. Smith does not get to move somebody. Uh, so I guess it's going to be Barton because I need to use Greg. So Barton is not going to be activated this uh, this time. Steel. So Steel has Hubby left. Um, he's got one over there on the broken track. Um, well, we got to roll to see if he can activate. He's already used his command clarity five so no so uh, he didn't have anybody within fire range I don't think this unit here I guess does but he's going to be at a strength of what uh, five uh, and uh, he's on a higher slope at this angle he wouldn't have the levee he'd have the trench so this guy could fire at the 29th uh, Louisiana. So, strength of five. Minus two because of the, he'd be at a three. Thomas is gonna have a CR of, uh, he's not supported. So two, up two for the trench, so at four. Yeah, we'd have to roll pretty high. Wait a minute. No, he's going to be at hat. Let's see, one. No, he's going to be quartered. So, no, he's not. He can't. He can't. That range, he can't. Yeah. So, nothing. They just get turned over, and that's it. Okay, so Steel is, uh, he's finished. Okay, we got SD Lee's replacement. No. So, uh, we'll just not do SD Lee. Brigade. We'll put the replacement back in. We go ML Smith. Okay, so ML Smith, he's got Blair. He's got uh, Stewart over there. So, with with Blair. Well, I'll try to do Blair. We'll see. Nope. Um, yeah, we really want to try to uh, to rebuild with Stuart. So, I guess Blair just won't get to move. Again. If he could, I could possibly put some pressure on these guys over here. Some of them are going to have to go over here. So, Stuart. But all right, I guess. I guess I'll not activate Stuart. So. 
really all I had over here. I've got this one Stewart unit right here. Okay. Talking about he could possibly fire, but you're talking about firing over. Infantry and cavalry units may not fire over friendly units, so that's why I can't do anything there. Um, okay. Seeing the elephant. don't have anybody that well yeah we do so this unit right here his CR is gonna be a two so seeing the elephant oh a printed cohesion rating of two or less so no Printed. It's got to see someone in the trench. So, nope. Doesn't apply. Let's see. So I can play it now or play it later if something happens. Okay. ML Smith. So now this is where we're trying to see if we can activate Blair to get him maybe attempted to cross... And no, got a five, I failed. So Blair doesn't activate. And ML Smith is done. We got Morgan. Morgan's got Sheldon left. Okay, so he can activate Sheldon. And what you got here, Sheldon? Okay, doesn't look like he's got anybody on the track there. He's got this unit here that can... Um, He is going to just do a rebuild, remove that. That's it for him. And that's it for Morgan. Okay, we got ML Smith. He's got Greg left. Let's see if we can activate Greg. Yes. All right, so this is pretty important to try to remove these guys. So we're doing a, uh, I guess we're gonna have to do a maneuver. This is cost two. Yeah, cost two, I couldn't get there. So, but we can get close enough for next time. So, maneuver, let's see if we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, oops, one, two, three, Four, five, six, right there. And then over here, I've got this unit. One, two, three. Four, five. Okay, so... Greg is done, ML Smith is done, and all we have left is 
SD with Thomas. Let's see if he can activate. Yes. So with Thomas, Um, he is going to he's going to attack try to push the Corsi back one, two, three, four um, of course, he, of course, gets to fire at him. So, defensive fire. We got the 42nd Ohio. Strength of four. 55. That's not good. Not good for the Confederates. Strength of four, 55. Okay, and he's going to have a CR of 2. He's not supported, so it's going to be routine. Roll to 51, depletion. So he gets depleted. Okay. I think he still has to go through with the combat. Must continue, yeah. This is under 11.3C. I was looking to see whether or not he has to continue the attack, and yes, he does. So, this is not going to be good. Okay, so. I'll tell you right now, it's just going to be over here on the sea. We'll have to go through all of the, the close combat shifts. It's going to be on C. So. And he's got a CR of 2. 44. It's going to be a close fight. Uh, we got a 63. So we deplete the Corsi. And then... The attacker takes a morale hit. So Thomas gets a morale hit. Of course, he's got a roll on the bro bro broken break test. He's got a CR of two. Oh, he got a roll of five, so he's going to the broken box three. So, and Thomas can enter there. Why not? He's going to enter it. So, oh, wait a minute. Let's do this here. Let's bring that unit back. We've got this stand to it. So we get a reroll. So, let's put this back. We're going to get a reroll. With, a, with that stand to it, I can get a reroll. So I don't. I just want to. I want to reroll the. Uh, 
the first one, first, uh, the uh, depletion result. And I got a one. That means the attacker is depleted. So he's got a roll. And let's see. He passes. So he stays there, but he still is shaken. So stand to it is used. I don't know if I can still use this confident. I think I have to be attacking. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get him to retreat. That's the, the key thing there. All right, so that is all of that turn. So we got seeing the elephant and confident that wasn't used. Okay. We got SD Lee's replacement there. Uh, no, yeah, confident wasn't used. Stand to it was. E Palma, we didn't use that. Okay, so let's pull back here. Looking over here again at the broken track, we've got uh, quite a bit going on here. Let's let's we shift these guys. Uh, these guys come into here. Um, game turn goes to five o'clock, and so we've got the, the Confederates have two turns to to root these guys out. Okay, um, same thing with these guys that have pushed across right here, and uh, the Corsi being stubborn there, um, we're able to push these guys here and. Blair's attempt to uh, get moving has been pretty futile because fertile, I guess. The last few turns, he hasn't he hasn't activated. I uh, haven't been able to put out these uh, pioneers and clear that and then get across the, the bayou. Uh, a lot of difficulty here. We're all just got uh, bunched up in here. And uh, possibly should have tried to remove these and then force some here maybe i really think this pontoon bridge over here is one of the big differences in the success of the the union army the placement of the pontoon bridge uh, i think should have been on a flank not in the middle where it's easy to uh to uh move reinforcements in or move units from one side to the other end. When you're on a flank, uh, the only units you can move over there quickly are going to be units that are on, on that flank, which thins out that flank. So, and uh, if I was playing the Union uh, uh, player against someone face to face, that's what I would do. I'd put my pontoon bridge over here on the flank, this, this, uh, on the Union's right flank, the Confederate left. So the Union, they have a really good chance of getting a marginal victory here. Um, Burbridge should have, should have tried to, uh, you know, get uh, some rallying going on here on at least those units and this unit here. So, I think that's where I played, somewhere I played the command confusion. Might have been that, might have been right there. Might have been on DeCourcy. I don't remember now. Anyways. So that's the situation here if you look across at uh, the lines here going from uh, Confederate left to, to right. Not much going on over here on the on the right. Blair, like I said, hasn't been able to activate, get moving. 
and uh, the the middle area where the tri the triangle is, where that corduroy bridge is, is is, is really been a stalemate. They pushed through and then got repelled, and uh, probably need to try to should have can't get one in there though. That's the problem because that is engagement. They can't move into engagement. They're artillery pieces. So I'd have to push these guys back, which I had, and they'd get artillery in there, but I didn't do that. So that's just because you got the the uh, canister now. So, all right, come back to see the next video. Uh, we've only got uh, probably two videos to go, uh, the 5 o'clock and the 5.30. And uh, that'll be a conclusion on this. I'll talk about... Uh, the battle itself and how it went and uh, maybe have a chat about uh, what each side should have done to get the victory or should have tried maybe so if you get a chance pick up uh, Donald L. Miller's book Vicksburg I've enjoyed reading uh, about uh, this this battle. Uh, there's a chapter in the book that deals with that, but then you know you've got the rest of the Battle of Vicksburg with uh, Pemberton against Grant. So come back and see what happens. This is Lee with 82 Game and 12.